this place reveal your glory multifaceted dimensions and cause our hearts to be enlightened let your word break every stronghold tonight let the sick be healed and let your oppressed be delivered let our destinies change forever in the name of Jesus it's in your glory I will stand I will stand and lift my hand it's in your glory I'll receive every miracle you have for me. It's in this glory we will stand. We will stand and lift our hands. in your glory we'll receive every miracle you have and abalaka brandos he who has the sun has eternal life we have the sun, so we have eternal life. Yes, we have the sun, so we have eternal life. We have the sun, we have eternal life. I have the sun, so I have eternal life. Bless your holy name, sing your praises forever, and I forget not your benefit. I bless your holy name, sing your praises forever, I forget not. Lord, we cry for a visitation. We do not want to be so familiar with your presence. We cry for a fresh Mighty one, we cry. We cry, Abba Father, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Sing, we cry, Abba Father, hallowed be your name.
Jesus, we declare that you are the lifter of our heads. Everything that you have done in this place, we give you the glory for it. For the miracles, the healings, the signs, the wonders. No man can do these things except God be with him. And Lord, we thank you for your presence. Without your presence, there is nothing we have. Without your presence, we have no message. Your presence is a life-transforming factor. And we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Prevail over us tonight, O oh God. We submit our spirits and our destinies. Let the refiner's fire build us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Walk up to two or three people. Just welcome them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's always a blessing. You cannot imagine how excited I am every week to bring us the word of the Lord. And you see, as a man of God, your responsibility is not to be celebrated or to build an empire for yourself as a true minister of the gospel your primary responsibility is to be an extension of the power the life and the glory of God let's look at the scripture 
Jeremiah 23 verse 4 Jeremiah 23 verse 4 it says and I will set up shepherds over them who shall feed them and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed neither shall they be lacking saith the Lord he says and I will set up shepherds over them and the primary assignment of those shepherds will be to feed them so that they no more fear they no longer are in dismay and that they neither be lacking saith the Lord and so when God anoints a man a minister of the gospel you are a servant to the people and your responsibility is to bring the fresh manna from heaven not just any revelation you read around but fresh manna from heaven that is capable of building changing empowering the people see our ministration in the new testament is that of the spirit meaning when you listen to a man who is ministering by the anointing you are receiving more than information is that true there is an activity is a transfer this is the most powerful part of the ministration of the word that while you are sitting right now listening to me there is a spiritual transfer something is entering your spirit ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 it says and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet let me tell you something without the ministration of the spirit every other thing we are doing is just noise it is the ability to convey spiritual realities not just the english not just the grammar are you getting my point now but there is an impartation upon your spirit man and that impartation is what engraces you to walk in the reality of what you are taught without the spirit backing the word there is no supply of grace to become it says as many as believed in him even to them that believed on his name he gave them what power to become not power to hear power to become meaning that when the word of god is taught in truth it should not only bless you in terms of making you feel good it should activate something in your spirit and make you become it because the word of god is not a thing the greek word word is logos right and jesus the word is called the living logos is a person you can listen to my message the living logos meaning the ultimate desire of god is not for you to learn scripture the ultimate desire is that through the instrumentality of scripture light will enter you to become an epistle yourself a written epistle the apostle says hallelujah so this is what we are here to do tonight and i trust that the lord will bless our hearts in the name of jesus christ i'll share with us a few thoughts that the lord put in my heart and i trust that god will help us hallelujah first john chapter 5 one of the most tragic things that has happened to the body of christ especially pastors preachers is that we have lost the spirit of the word and i say this with a very heavy heart there's so much of talking going on sunday after sunday talking listen let me tell you the truth i'm not against the theological understanding of the word i'm not against the intellectual comprehension of the word but if all we have to give people is just information just rema in terms of new discoveries we will never be able to produce a victorious army 
Hallelujah. It doesn't take being spiritual to have information. It just takes being passionate. You don't have to be spiritual. You don't have to wait on God to get spiritual information. You see, the distinguishing factor, let me tell you something. Many people think it's just the new information that produces transformation in people's lives. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. There is a spirit that is behind scripture. One time the Lord opened my eyes. And when the Lord opened my eyes, I was in a vision and I saw a big, like an ancient door or a gate if I will call it. And when I looked closely, I found out that that gate was made of many smaller doors. Actually a door. Many smaller doors. Are you following me now? And on every one of those doors, a scripture was written. I saw the doors opening and closing. Meaning, behind the letter, behind the grammar, behind the Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic, there is a spirit waiting to transform people. The assignment, the ministration of that spirit is the spirit of life. The spirit of life. Not just the spirit of truth. The spirit of life. He gives life to the information you are hearing. And then you are empowered to walk in its reality here and now. So there is a lot of church going on. There is a lot of conferences and activities and meetings. But what we have done primarily as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is to reduce the ministration of the word to become an intellectual thing. So it's just about theological dissertations or Greek and Hebrew. Somehow we have convinced ourselves that the more we read Greek and Hebrew and express, you know, the words in Greek and Hebrew and bring new words, we think that the anointing is in the Greek or the anointing is in the Hebrew or the anointing is in the English or the communication, there is a spirit. There is a spirit. That's the reason why you can hear a very powerful message and not be changed. There is a spirit. Listen, as I'm talking to you right now, there is a spirit that is compelling what I'm saying to enter you so that you are persuaded. That's why you can bring somebody that is hardened Somebody that will even swear that I won't listen to God, I won't do anything. And when he sits down under this anointing, from the prayer to the worship, there is a spirit. There is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It is that spirit that makes the person just keep quiet later on. And all of a sudden, you are seeing somebody that you know was stubborn. Probably even insulting the meeting. And yet he's silent. And then paying attention. Listen. I want to convince you. That without the ministration of the spirit. Everything we are doing in ministry is useless. Get this. Get this. Get this. There is a wrong. Wrong understanding about impact and transformation. Many people wonder why you go to certain Christian circles. And there is hardly any change. For 10 years. People can be in a church, but there is no notable transformation. The only thing is that they know the names of everybody. And while it's good to teach people things like, um, you know, accounting, timekeeping, other secular principles here and there, there is nothing in life that will replace the ministration of the Spirit. Not just being full of the Holy Ghost. Not just receiving the anointing, the ministration of the spirit, the participation that at every point in your dispensing of the word, there is a light. There is a life. That's the only way your words can transform people. Let me tell you something. I am always aware that it's a privilege for God's people to be gathered here week in, week out. Some persons have traveled from different states different regions to be here you cannot just come all the way to just come and listen to a a presentation of bible or just a religious bible study it's more than that that is the reason why let me tell you something it's good to listen to tapes it's good to read books 
but none of them can replace being in an atmosphere there is something about the atmosphere are you getting what i'm saying an atmosphere activates a lot of things there is something about you sitting down from the first time you come in and sit down even before the service starts proper there is already the ministration of, of the spirit going on convictions are changing ideologies are shifting death is being replaced by life the earthly is becoming the heavenly right that revelation listen let me tell you i've said it again and let me just use this opportunity to stress i absolutely believe that before jesus comes you see we've taught on the concept of immortality there's been a number of preachers who have brought that concept in the body of christ but what we have not taught people it is a scriptural concept the bible tells us death can be swallowed up in victory that the mortal can become the immortal that the natural the terrestrial can translate there is a provision in the kingdom that allows the natural to become divine are you getting what i'm saying now that divine dimension brothers and sisters is what we are called to demonstrate a believer must understand that there is nothing natural about you if you are not convinced about what i'm telling you you will never be able to do great things for the kingdom i know that here and there because of our humanity the attachment of this body somehow we tend to trivialize and we think that the activities of the kingdom must be done sensually and so we preach sensually we carry out all that we do sensually but there is a spirit there is a spirit that is the one factor that makes ministry different from business or makes ministry different from a, a seminar right that's the difference we have lost this spirit in crusades we have lost this spirit in conferences and you see that people sit down and they never leave with that transformation can i tell you something the ministration of the spirit is not just about understanding a topic it's about the presence of god changing you meaning if we come here and all we do is to sing you should still live transformed because you see the the concept of transformation is not just about hearing words alone when you are sitting in an atmosphere something begins to happen at once your convictions there is a shift there is an alignment that makes you and postures you to begin to receive of spiritual things first john chapter 5 verse 11 and this is the record or this is the testimony that God has given unto us what? Eternal life. The word here is Zoe. I know we talk a lot about it. Eternal life is not life after death. Listen, listen. Eternal life is not life. It's not the life you receive after death. Right? What happens after death is the consummation. The consummation. Right? Eternal life is the divine life god's own kind of life being supplanted in a human spirit and finding expression here and now in the earth realm and the quality of that life if it is of god it should be able to conquer anything in this life including death but it is the ministration of that life that many people do not understand so we in the kingdom let me read the, the scripture let me not go ahead of myself it says and this is the record that god has given unto us what so it is clear from scripture that it has been given but how is the technology of that life transferred it says and this life is where it's in his son next verse it says he that had the son had that life and he that had not the son of god had not life watch this the bible tells us listen my goodness the primary purpose of receiving jesus 
that means your coming to Christ or your coming accepting the Lordship of Christ in itself is not even the end it is the spiritual system with which the life of God gets to you the Bible says the life of God is hidden in the Christ himself right the Son of God so the way you receive that life is to receive the Son of God that's why we preach that's why souls must be won. So it's, it's not just trying to save people from going to hell alone. It's the spiritual system with which the divine life gets to them. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying now. Because if all that there was to being born again was going to heaven, you would have left immediately you gave your life to Christ. So the technology is, of course, it secures your eternal destiny. But the Bible says God gave us life. But that life is hidden in the son himself so that until you receive the son you cannot have life meaning you can be in church for years are you getting what i'm saying be around christian people for years but if you have not received the son it's impossible for you to have that life there are all kinds of life you can have your biological life you can have an occultic life sponsored by the agency of another spirit but if you are to have the very life of God, so way, God's quality and class of life, you must embrace his son. Embracing the father will not give you that life. Hear me? Embracing an angel will not give you that life. Embracing revelation will not give you that life. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must know what ministers that life. It says, and the life the office of the son of god jesus christ is the only means through which that life can be communicated how many people are in church they've been in church for years but they do not have this life of god because they have not embraced they are aware that the son of god exists are you getting what i'm saying they are aware that he died but they have not received of his life and the bible tells us that you receive now the question is what exactly is that eternal life what is eternal life really what is eternal life is it is it um is it a package that is given to us is it an inanimate thing that is just put in us is it a programming what exactly is eternal life i'll tell you eternal life is the presence of the eternal spirit of god in a man that's exactly what eternal life is eternal life is not a thing you are giving when you give your heart to jesus eternal life is the very entrance of the spirit of the living god to come and reside in you the extension as we call it in the greek alos paracletos the one who has come to be a representation of the ministry of jesus here and now in your life so my mortal body that if i come to jesus christ and i truly receive his son that life the only gate that's why jesus said i am the way not a way i am the way right so the spirit of life the very holy spirit can only find expression when you embrace the son this scripture is a clarification or an explanation of galatians chapter 3 right when you begin to read from verse 13 down the bible says christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law it says be made a cause for us look at me let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old look up look up look up let me explain something to you do you know what makes the old testament old or when the bible talks of the old man he's talking about any entity that does not have the life-giving spirit is obsolete the spiritual language is old are you getting the point so it's not old because of time i don't know if you understand what i'm saying you know in the earth if if we bought this two years ago we say this is old this is new in the spirit old is only compared to its quality with respect to the presence of the holy spirit that means an ideology is old 
to the degree to which the Holy Spirit is not involved in it again. The reason why we call the ordinances of the past is not just because a new one has come. If the new one came and the Holy Spirit is not in it, it will still be old. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, what makes a thing fresh or new is not that it is happening for the first time. It is the very presence, the eternal life of God. That seed that conquers death, that conquers weakness. And the Bible so designed the body of Christ. Watch this. The body of Christ is supposed to be the vehicle that hosts the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says, for this cause... Because people cannot discern the mystery, some are weak, some are sick, and some do sleep. Is that not in your Bible? It said there is a mystery of the body. The mystery of godliness, the Bible calls it. That Christ can dwell in a mortal body. He said if you do not discern it, you will be weak. You will be sick, and you can even sleep. Meaning that immortality... It's only a possibility because of the presence of the eternal spirit of God. But the, the, the factor is this. Um, in the kingdom, there are two realities. I want you to write this down. What I'm teaching you tonight is powerful. You will walk in the glory of God in supernatural dimensions if you understand what I'm saying. There are two realities that every believer contends with or works with number one is the reality in christ the reality in christ the beginning of the experience of the believer in the new testament starts in christ outside of christ there is no initiation into the realities of the new testament right the 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 whole new testament starts the pivot on which our ministration of life is built upon is in Christ. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. Never alone. For with God, all things are possible. Outside of him, many things are not possible. For in Christ, we are complete. For in Christ, we are perfected. Are you getting the point now? But then there are realities in Christ. For instance, we are seated in heavenly places. The Bible tells us in Christ. The other reality is the experience of that truth here and now. The experience of that truth here and now. You can call it the reality in Christ and then the experiential reality. The Bible tells us all through the New Testament all that we have become in Christ. Many times we do not understand why Apostle Paul, when he makes certain statements about the believer, he adds in Christ. And then we do not understand his communications. Some of us have been taught and maybe some of us sincerely misled that the moment it has happened in Christ, it means that the, the experience of it is manifest here and now. That's not true. Paul himself speaking to the Hebrew church, in chapter 2 begins to clarify right and he tells us certain things he tells us we do not yet see all things Let, let's turn there Paul gives us a contrast that will help us in our spiritual growth Hebrews are you blessed tonight I have the Sun and I have eternal life he who has the Sun has eternal life two verse seven and eight let's look at seven and eight hebrews two verse seven and eight it says thou hast made him remember paul was quoting from david it was david the son of jesse right the king who by revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom wrote this he said to none of the angels, right? Has he said at any point, Thou art my son, 
you know this and that he did not put the world in subjection to any angel and then the bible says talking about man now he said you have made him or in in, in uh, talking about jesus now in his earthly work he says you have made him a little lower than the angels the word there was mistranslated it's supposed to be uh angelio not necessarily like the beings but it's an expression of god himself many times you see the bible use the word angel to mean the very lord himself is that not true many times in scripture you will see that and uh, uh, certain times the word angel is written in italics meaning that there is more explanation to it it doesn't mean an angel like a messenger from the presence of the lord but god himself so it says the word there is supposed to be thou has made him a little lower than eloha god himself the almighty so jesus lowered in rank for the purpose of coming to become a man in the earth right he says thou hast crowned him now he's talking about his coronation this was the coronation that david saw the lord said to my lord right sit thou at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool so he says it here that thou crownest him with what glory and honor and you did set him over the works of your hand verse 8 thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him he left nothing that it, listen i hope you realize that in the new testament you are not anything until christ is first it are you getting what i'm saying now so every time you see the bible talking about man find out whether christ has become that thing if christ has not become it because he must be the firstborn in all things meaning the dimension that the christ did not show us a possibility of getting there is no point trying to get there this is what i'm saying are you getting the point we can contend even more than the earth work of jesus because he said this verily verily i say unto you he that believes in me is that not in your bible the works that i do in other words he said my eternal life is not compressed to four gospels if i stayed longer i would have unveiled more possibilities now if you have my life i authorize you to keep exploring the possibilities and immortality is one of the possibilities in that life divine health is one of the possibilities in that life the ability to live supernatural though natural is one of the possibilities we must be able to stretch the possibilities what are the contents of this zoe life what does it consist of what are the benefits why should i want to receive the life of god it's like a product you are marketing to me convince me why should i want it what is the excellency of god's life over my natural life are you getting what i'm saying so the bible tells us speaking about man but that man was not just man like you that man was first the man christ are you getting what i'm saying now i know that when you read this scripture he says who is man that thou art mindful of him that man is not just talking about the natural man he's first talking about the firstborn and all he has called into glory because he died as the only begotten son then he resurrected as the first of the begotten and from there he had 120 other begotten sons and from there there are many begotten sons so jesus is no longer the only begotten son of the father by the spirit of adoption we have come into that sonship too are you are you understanding what i'm teaching you and so the bible tells us that when you receive of that son you receive of that life that life is like a drug the presence of the holy spirit the moment he finds expression certain reactions begin to happen watch this he opens you up to the realities so jesus in the new testament becomes what we call our pattern man jesus came and walked for three and a half years to show us an example of what the zoe life is are you getting it? he was the first that opened us up to the possibility of the zoe life so when we saw the things that he did we saw the mighty things that he did the first that had the spirit without measure and he did so many things and then 
he told us that uh -uh, it is profitable for you that i go for if i do not go i cannot send the comforter he will come and continue he will be an extension of my ministry the holy spirit is to us today what jesus was to the 12 disciples exactly what jesus was to the 12 disciples the holy spirit is to us today that's the reason why there are no three thrones in heaven there are only two thrones in heaven but we agree that there is the father the son and the holy spirit because the third throne is in us there is a marriage that has been done never to be separated again are you are you getting that now it is him that takes us to the god class the presence of the holy spirit are we are we understanding what i'm teaching tonight so the realities in christ and then our experience of that reality the bible says something very powerful here it said thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet right for in that he put all things under his feet he left nothing that is not under him at what point did this happen to man jesus himself said this when he resurrected what did he say he said all hail he told the disciples he says all authority exousia delegated power has been given to me when he was in the earth all authority let me say something that looks controversial when he was in the earth all authority and power over all the earth was not given to him i hope you know absolutely that's the reason why when he was sending the disciples with his power he told them it will only work when you go to the lost tribe of israel don't go outside that jurisdiction is it not in your bible so when jesus resurrected he now said now the scope a coronation has happened to me right the same way it happened to adam that dominion mandate has been restored and he said now all authority has been given he says go in that light in other words in christ the bible says that we've been made to sit with him above all thrones and dominions and power and every name that is named both in this life and in the life to come that's what the apostle was trying to explain there but he leaves a disclaimer he says but now everybody say but now are you seeing in christ all things have been perfected but now the experience of that reality he says but now we see not what is paul saying now paul you just told us now that in christ all things are finished is that not true when jesus hung on the cross he said it is finished look at this the thieves that were on the cross one was telling him ah paraphrasing now we saw you do a lot of miracles is it that you can't bring us down from the cross another person was saying when you get here so they were all thinking of a lot of things but jesus said today he was giving him a revelation that in christ there is an experience so in christ you are healed in christ you are prosperous is that true in christ you are free from every yoke and every curse and everything but then translating that experience it does not just profit you in christ gives you access but it does not make it a reality that you can handle now there is a system with which you can take that which is in christ and make it happen here and now i hope you know that a man on a wheelchair the price for his healing has been paid why is he still on the wheelchair i don't know if you understand what i'm saying every sinner in hell today from the time jesus came the price for their salvation has been paid why are they in hell as merciful as the mercy of jesus is are you getting a point now so there is a difference between realities in christ and the experience the realities in christ give us a window to the things we can claim and the possibilities that are there on account of the zoe life that we have but that does not mean because you saw it in christ automatically it will find expression here and now i don't know if you understand what i'm saying so you can read in scripture 
that by his stripes I am healed but here and now you do not see that perfected in your life right you've seen that we've been redeemed from every curse of the law and all the ordinances the, the handwritings and the and all the things that have spoken against us they've been nailed to the cross but you are watching right there at 25 there was a miscarriage your younger sister at 25 there was a miscarriage obviously a demonic pattern finding expression so did god lie no it's just that we have not been taught the system of making the realities in christ to become our reality is god speaking to us now so most believers just see oh in christ and then this is how they respond god forbid i have seen it in the bible i will never be sick i will never be broke and then you are getting broke you are getting sick because what you saw is not a lie but the ability to translate it here and now have many people not read that this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall what how many people are casting out devils how many do you know in my name they will speak with new tongues how many innocent believers do you know have struggled for years praying and fasting for the baptism of the holy spirit and seemingly it did not come how many times have you walked to a sick body with every confidence the bible says heal the sick right raise the dead cast out devils it says freely you have received freely give in christ in christ in christ how do we make that experience here and now because if we do not learn this eventually we are going to hate god because we think he's a liar a deceiver i'm very concerned let me tell you sincerely at how distant we are from the things we talk about the things we claim and the experience of the same are you getting what i'm saying there is too much talk in the body of christ we must humble ourselves and admit that there are certain things we do not yet understand because there is too much talk about who god is what he can do we make such bold statements about god but when it comes to bringing god in the scene bringing his power here and now we begin to find theological explanations to excuse ourselves the bible says for instance jesus christ the same when today and forever how many preachers do you know have said that how many of us men of god have said that how many of us have been able to reproduce that reality we must admit that there is something we are not understanding we must admit that there is a dimension of spiritual reality we are missing and let me tell you where we are missing it this is it romans chapter 8 let me tell you where we are missing it very seriously and if we do not change a lot is going to go wrong Eight verse five. Eight verse five. In fact, let's start. Okay, verse five. Everyone read. It says, For they that are after the flesh do what? Do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Verse six. For to be what? stop the word carnal there is the word sensual it's not supposed to be it's not a bad word in terms of carnal doesn't mean immoral or maybe in a negative sense it just means that when you are carnal the limitation the scope of your judgment and your assessment of spiritual things is either intellectual scientific or sensual that's the limitation that's the circumference it says to be carnally minded whoever lives his life from that standpoint 
that your perspective about life is just how one plus one will become two it must be logical it must be scientific the bible says any man that thinks like that is already dying think about that it says for to be carnally minded is what death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so a man can watch oppression in his life and say no i went to school what what sort of oppression i mean if if you fail you fail it's not any demon anything you see that and then he does not know that the whole world lies in wickedness that all that you see is not all that there is there are many people for instance who look up and say there is no god because they are carnally minded they they reason from the sensual realm let me tell you the church of the lord jesus christ in a bit and i teach you principles we just finished having financial principles but in a bid to break life down into an understandable format we are gradually coming down from that height of spirituality to reduce god into a carnal mathematical formula so there is a there is a mathematics that is responsible for healing there is a mathematics that is responsible for a and b and c and then we throw the holy spirit out and gather those informations and feel on the strength of these informations i can make it yet the bible says all scripture was inspired was written right by the inspiration of who the holy ghost the very spirit of life the spirit of truth the one that was sent to make the reality of this divine life true in us we have thrown him away and we have reduced everything if you cannot explain it like mathematics i don't believe i don't understand i throw it away it's gradually destroying us even our presentation of the gospel we are seeking to make sinners as though the gospel is not supernatural we try to beat it down and make it as mathematical as possible whereas the bible tells us that as you are speaking to people the law of the spirit of life is supplanting the law of sin and death how do you explain that mathematically so there are people carrying all kinds of demonic substances and all medicine can tell you is this is this this is that you see it happens at times there are women who based on the way they are formed they don't have wombs you just happen to be one of them god is faithful and all of that and then you sit down and believe that that's how it is the bible says to be carnally minded let me tell you the truth if we do not grow i'm not against intellectualism right there's always that saying that you should not be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly relevance um, that is true but if you are truly spiritually minded you cannot be irrelevant to the earth are you getting what i'm saying see i read books i, I have studied a lot of people there is no man who works based on the truth of this scripture that will be irrelevant in this life this is the dispensation of spiritual men we have left dispensation of physical strength of giants we are we are gradually leaving the dispensation of intellectualism there are too many questions medicine cannot answer our governments are failing flawlessly because there is a principality that can sit down over a region and they try policies after policies here comes the generation of the spiritual men those who can tell the government you have done all you know to do can you finally pay attention to us those who change the world in the bible were not just foolish people just intellectualizing everything these were men daniel daniel for instance he understood that persia there was a spiritual host of wickedness around that territory and he knew the key to sustaining a smooth flow of that government was prayer the moment he prayed the spirits of the medes and the persians were disturbed and they used individuals to pass a government policy don't pray just for 30 days can you imagine just 30 days of no prayer and we will wreck babylon and the king passed it and daniel said no 
I'm a spiritual man. I'm not just, I, I know I'm intelligent. I'm a government representative, but I remember the prayer of my fathers. I, 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 are you getting the point? I remember the temple of Solomon. It was Solomon while dedicating the temple. Part of his request, he said, Lord, whoever faces this temple and prays, hearken to them. And he opened his window towards Jerusalem. He said, I know I'm intellectual, but I'm not so stupid. I know the mystery that brought me to this palace. Because I came as a captive. There was a mystery beyond mathematics that brought me here. And then they caught him. I can imagine other people saying, well, you claim everything is God, 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 God. God, now let God save you. And the lions were roaring. Brothers and sisters, that was physical. The lion is a fierce beast. But there was going to be a playing of the spiritual. The superiority, the excellency of the spiritual. As soon as he stepped in, an angel came. Said, Daniel, so you have not forgotten. You have not forgotten where you come from. How many of us have forgotten? You see that? There are so many people. Talk about God right now. They become irritated. If you talk in church, it's okay. But you talk about God outside to people. They just say, Kai, I beg, Jare. You are talking business. You are trying to scatter everything. As though God is the reason why all things will not work. Let me tell you. If you ignore God in any aspect of your life, get set for a shock. Because the realm of the spirit is still alive and strong. How many ladies think they will marry because they are fine? They get up around, they don't pray, they don't listen, they say, God forbid, yeah, I know that, I know what God gave me. Be celebrating there until you find out that you are 45 years and as pretty as you are because there, there are realities in the spirit, my brothers and sisters. There are realities. I got a testimony from, I got a testimony from um, a ministration we went for in Kaduna that, that, that blessed me. One of the pastors um, came over to my place yesterday and he was telling me. When I went for the meeting, a woman was pregnant. Brothers and sisters, watch this. At least biology tells us I'm not a doctor. There are doctors here. Um, so how the child is supposed to be formed. Eventually, for reasons they cannot explain, the child started turning mysteriously. No, the child does not turn mysteriously. Something turned it. Let me tell you, the oldest man in the earth is not up to 120. There are spirits that are millions of years. You call Satan a liar, you are right. You call him a deceiver, you are right. You call him a fool, you are very wrong. Satan is old. Are you hearing that? Absolutely. You know, sometimes the way people just talk, me, God forbid, my spirit can do this and that and that. It's not all about this. It's not and and while you are talking, the realm of the spirit is just watching you. How old? Do you know in Bible days, all of us are not even up to teenagers right now? Right? Yet, the ancient spirit of God gives us a prescription about how to live. And he says, if you want life and peace, be spiritually minded. Be spiritually minded. Do not let education do not let intellectualism, money or anything take away that spiritual factor. It has nothing to do with a man of God. It is the key to life and peace. We have thrown the Holy Spirit. We feel he's only relevant in church, right? So when you go to your job and all of that, people say, now let's, let's, let's be real. Let's be real. While the, the Bible says, I am the truth. I am reality. When God began to build and train me, God made it a necessity and he let me know that forever in my earth work, the Holy Spirit will be and will remain the mystery behind any impact, any transformation. You see that? For me, the spirit of the living God is not just one nuisance that you have to embrace so that God will like you. He is what you call eternal life. If you are not aware of that, be aware. Eternal life is not what he brings. His very presence is the life of God. Jesus never became the Christ. He was 
the son of the carpenter he could die that's why his parents ran away with him but when the spirit of god came he made him the christ so when the bible says in christ it's not just saying in jesus alone in jesus yes but together with the spirit of life look at what we have taught people about faith today look at the, the nonsense that goes on in the body of christ that we call faith right we teach people all kinds of experiences as if it's voodoo that's why it's not working let me tell you faith is a product of an encounter when the bible says faith comes by hearing do you hear what you read answer me you see we need to examine it was talk it was a spiritual language it was not even just talking about hearing with the ear there is a quality of spiritual perception that an encounter brings and that's what produces true faith because when the bible says hearing and hearing by the word at that time there was no books like this king james had not authorized this so what did they call the word the days that are coming will be fierce the days that are coming will be spiritual right now have you seen the way the world is going lately there is no embarrassment about spirituality again is that true everybody is opening up it used to be in secrecy before but right now there is an open confrontation it's like everybody is saying kai i'm not hiding it again i'm gay simple kill me if you will kill me up it's not today it has been like that another person is saying it's not only you two of us too another person is saying let me tell you i've not been a real christian this is my charm oh yeah you see everybody is confessing one by one one by one the meaning of that is darkness is about to reveal itself publicly right and it will bring everyone in a position to sustain a spiritual system to be higher than it or become a victim someone is building a house with blocks and cement when you are about to complete it and give thanksgiving the next week one small wind will just shake and you will come and not even see the two course of blocks it will scatter everything what sort of wind is that is it now wind started how many hurricanes are on right now and scientists say they watch from space that before the hurricanes comes they see images of spirits doing things from the sea minutes later you see all the animals running they are still spiritual except human beings disaster hardly meets animals there they run away and leave us we are there trying to make money we are dead and we are dying like chickens This is a spiritual generation listen this is a generation where it's no longer the issue of are you a pastor or not to be serious to be spiritually minded the holy spirit is the advantage of this generation i am convinced that we are the generation that will return christ yes i am convinced the bible specifically talks about a number of things that as we call it that omega generation there are certain happenings that will characterize our generation hallelujah that we discern spiritual things let me give you an instance hold on let me explain something how many people in church today have thrown away the sacredness of being a man of god and the fivefold ministry in an attempt to balance these bossy things men of god do on stage right there are so many people who now challenge their pastors challenge everybody are you the only one who will preach are you the only one we have a democratic church that can vote out throw out pastors because of policies have you read in first samuel i can't remember i think maybe chapter 15 or 13 one time when saul is that true when samuel told saul that they should go and have a solemn assembly is that true he was coming to make a sacrifice they gathered the people it's in your bible 
and then Saul told the, I mean Samuel said he's coming at so and so time and he didn't come and they waited for him they waited for him they waited for him after they waited for him people were scattering and the ego of the king Saul was was at stake and he said Kai this guy is not coming let me what offer the bond offering as soon as he offered the bond offering, Samuel came. And he said, well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, honestly. I was afraid. It's not like I wanted, I, me too, I didn't want to do it. The people were disturbing me. And since you were not around, I thought since I was a king, let me do it. And Samuel said, you have done foolishly. He said, if you had allowed me to come, God would have established your throne. So it would have now been son of Saul, not son of David. He said because you have done this the kingdom is taken to you for god has found another man after his heart just for violating the priesthood how many people violate the priesthood today and they don't care right all kinds of people any man can get up at any point lambast any man of god write any article and speak and believe he will go scot free go and read your bible it's because we have become carnally minded we don't even know what it means to be a man of god we think being a man of God is choosing the vocation of preaching. Right? So that when one walk or the other doesn't walk, or maybe you read something that you felt is, is not lucrative, you just say, talk. it's okay, at least you are preaching. You see, this is our mindset. So we, do not, we have thrown the sacredness that is in the altar. There were times in the Bible that when a priest and a prophet was not available to do certain things, they left it there. Have you read about Uzzah in the Bible? I'm showing you how we have fallen from understanding spiritual standards. The Bible says we do not discern the body of Christ. And many people have received casualties because we do not know how the body was supposed to operate. Right? Remember, that there was a time when the ark of God was being carried back and then he was about to fall and an innocent man called Uzzah for his sincere love for God wanted to run and just block the ark. What happened to him? He died instantly. Have you read your Bible when Miriam and Aaron looked at their brother and said, Kai, see you, you are our younger brother. Don't open eye for us here. Is it only you that God will speak to? Huh? We were all born by this and that and Moses didn't say anything. What happened? A cloud came at once. Miriam became as white as snow. White as snow. Right? And Aaron, Aaron, it was just because of the priesthood position that shielded him. We have lost touch with spiritual mysteries because we want to do everything carnally. When they tell a man that God is able to do a miracle for you and that in... in in five months god can open you to fountains of blessings you know they look around and say eh, i know it's not like i'm saying god cannot do it but you see we have to calculate how a will become b and how c will become d look at how people try to run ministry today right they try to run ministry in all kinds of funny ways look at how people try to generate finances for ministry when you see that you know that we have hopelessly lost touch with spiritual reality how did they build the tabernacle in the old testament because they were there for 40 years in the wilderness how did the supply come how did their clothes grow with them and their sandals today if we were before the red sea this is what apostle joshua selma would have done engineers where are you the spirit of bazalel and then we'll start constructing a bridge we are saying that if I'm a prophet, in five years we'll cross this Red Sea. See that? That's how we would have worked. That's how much we have reduced God. That's exactly what we would have done. And then the engineers come. And we say, okay, let's start doing everything. Let's start the architects come. Let's start. And then where are the kingdom financiers? And then prayer department. Where are? And then we keep praying. And God says, is that all to me? And then after five years, we say, now you will cross the bridge slowly. And while we are crossing, we'll be singing choruses. And when we reach there, I will put a, menu, a monument. Prophecy walked into motion by Apostle Joshua Selman. Shame on us 
because we call that the old testament we laugh at them we even say they are a shadow of us are you joking read hebrews 11 there are men who in their humanity we cannot even touch their shoes yet they, that's the old testament we are very quick to say it's old we have done away with it but we have not done one tenth of the things that they have done it's in your bible people invoke angels to use hailstone and stone their enemies when was the last time you saw that when was the last time you saw angels pursuing Boko Haram with hailstones you are laughing it's a serious thing look at bomb blasts happening on around and there are men of God all around and we claim we are anointed they even put it on our posters when they invite us anointed man Joshua Selman shame on us let me tell you if this is what we think will bring Christ back we are joking how many barren women have we been unable to solve their problems look at look at jesus jesus inspires me these guys who were with the guy that was crippled they knew that if they could only see jesus that situation would be over is it not in your bible and they said let's tear this man's ceiling we will explain it to him afterwards today we brag and compare ourselves with ourselves is that true and do a lot of carnal things there is almost no difference between what we do and the supernatural or and, and 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 that of unbelievers if i stand right now and i minister to sam and he falls under the anointing people shamefully write an article and say he's using witchcraft where did we leave our spirituality is it not in your bible that jesus with the divine life walked through people on a cliff they were trying to kill him he walked through them like a spirit where is that generation I wanted to show us a video it's just that um we, we we didn't have it i didn't discuss with the media would have shown us that video um of patricia king right i know they don't have it they may not have it now otherwise you would have watched the video where oil was coming directly from heaven real oil physical oil you would have seen the foot of real angels that you are not pressing into god doesn't mean some other people are not The divine life we shout zoe we shout zoe but there is nothing zoe about our lives if they shoot me i die zoe right every ep every epidemic is in the society and it embraces me zoe now i don't say this in a derogatory way i'm saying this to challenge us i guarantee you if we learn how to receive that zoe life you will watch HIVs get healed as if they do not exist. It will no longer even be a prayer point. The more I see people line up for counseling, I don't rejoice to say, wow, it means I'm an anointed man. I look at people line up for counseling and I bleed in my heart because I say, shame on us. It means we are doing very small. A sign that we are doing so much is that the people in the church should be so impacted they should now go out and begin to transform people but today we say wow i had a crowd hundreds of people to to mean that ministry is moving forward wrong parameters because there is nothing spiritual that we can use to gauge our standard who is god speaking to tonight where have you reduced god let me tell you one day maybe i'll come in the night i'll bring a chair here one coin on here We'll just sit down and we'll discuss and i will share with you some of my encounters when god began to work with me some of you if i share it as you are seated now you've seen me every day you've even eaten with me but you will not believe it because you say it's a lie encounters with angels all kinds of spiritual encounters because i believe in him i believe in him i'll never forget the first time i had the audible voice of god let me tell you something if you hear god you must have faith you see that it's not about maybe i'm trying to calculate you must have faith listen at the at the mount of transfiguration when elijah and moses appeared what did peter do peter recognized them immediately had he ever seen them who told him 
he said what i see three people he said privilege that means i have questions to ask let's prepare three beds one for elijah one for moses because he thought they came to pass the night with jesus and discuss a lot of things when an angel appeared to mary mary was not afraid meaning was a natural occurrence it was the salutation she was afraid of not the angel today if somebody says he has seen an angel say, i beg jerry angel where you think angels are just like that yet the bible says are they not ministering spirit i'm showing you why we have become carnal we threw away the holy spirit we are gradually kicking the holy spirit out in a bid to do what we call word 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 right word 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 just the word give it the word and, and don't give me anything else there are even people who reject jesus and say just give me bible give me bible jesus go once it's not bible even jesus should go away and the devil likes that theology if it is bible you want zondavan keep publishing new versions keep coming out and we keep carrying the bible and we convince ourselves that because we are holding bible and reading it we are growing in the world but we are becoming carnal that's why death is rampant it is that carnality do you know that our forefathers were more spiritual than us is that true witchcraft in the village is not a shock an average young boy in the village has seen some form of witchcraft so if they tell him somebody can appear and disappear he will believe it but in the church ah if i disappear here now now in this place finally the article will be complete the article you have been writing you will pay new nigeria tomorrow morning to publish it confirm hey which is on suit Yet we talk about the mighty army that is rising up. Mighty army. Where is the army? Truly there is an army that is rising up. But let me tell you, our level of transformation is slow. We are hardly becoming like the Christ. There is, there is a standard that has been measured for us. And the greatest of us is just a step out of the cave. We must sustain a technology to hurry up and to catch up. The church call spiritual growth prosperity since every other spiritual thing like healing and the rest is very hard we have left it and then remedied it with money so when i come in with a nice suit and i come and say am i is the word not working let me tell you the truth if that's what you think you go to a meeting where you see people popping champagne of hundred thousand which which pastor or which christian can hardly do that in nigeria there are people lavishing resources we have reduced ourselves and match our spirituality so if i come out with a jeep if there are five jeeps that are lined up here you say man god is in koinonia what five jeeps is here oh. in bible days men were called generals on the strength of heavy capacity in the spirit one man will threaten a nation not a politician but Elijah, not in a radio station, he made a declaration to the heavens. He vetoed the prayer request of everybody and said, me, I speak, there will not be rain. Not God revealed to me. I stand in my office over this territory and I said, there will not be rain. And he went to bed. It was by sorcery, Jezebel found out he was the one and she swore to remove his head. How many men of God have disgraced themselves on television? How many men of God have disgraced their ministries in newspapers? How many men of God predicted that 2012 is, is rapture? Huh? How many? You see, we, we, we just showed the whole world that we have been lying for years. Instead of even keeping it quietly to now be pressing for forgiveness and transformation, we now went on air to publicly embarrass ourselves. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more. Today, people talk about the anointing, but they do not even know what the anointing is. 
No, at all. I tell you, many people do not even know what the anointing is. We have reduced God to prosperity because that's the only physical show of progress. Right? We have left the harder ones like healing and speaking over nations and forcefully bringing people to the cross. Those ones are very intricate. You can't fake those ones. So we have thrown them and then we ran to the easy ones. We make money and make two and two together and then we now say it's working. It's not working. No. We have to be, admit this thing and press into God. Part of my goals in life is to so align to the Holy Spirit that my life becomes a true expression of the divine life. I was told about one or two cases of some women here in this place who are here right now. Right? I think one of them is a miscarriage issue. I'll minister to her shortly. And then another person. The question is, if that happens in your church, what will you tell them? I know what you will tell them. I know what you will tell them. You don't have faith. If you have faith, you will provoke my oil. There's no problem with my own end. It's you that don't. We are liars. We are back. Must be a generation that can present Christ to the world in his fullness. I truly believe I will be part of those people with all my heart. I desire to see the fullness of his glory find expression. I have received the son. And that means I believe that his life is in me. But where is that life? We are only seeing fragments of it. Fragments of it. But there is a revival that is coming. This will be a revival of the spirit himself. When the spirit of God will start schooling people by ourselves. Because all the schools of ministry we have done and everything. We have ended up making people just like us. The spirit of God in these days. The Lord has started revealing this to me throughout last week. I've been under an intense anointing right from when I finished the, the financial series. And the Holy Ghost told me he will personally begin to teach people. As many who are interested, there will be such a move of the spirit. I'm telling you, God will begin to tutor people. And the more you see him, the more you will know preachers are lying. The more you encounter him, you will know that people are sincere but liars the lord is revealing this to me this is how god trained me god taught me so many things secrets in the bible there are times that i will the lord will be visiting me and his presence physical cloud i'm not talking of some spooky vision that people lie about real cloud like a fog will fill the room and i'll lie down there and the pages of my bible will be turning by themselves to certain scriptures i hope you believe it hallelujah we have reduced god we have reduced god is this is too bad to an extent that if somebody on a wheelchair stands up people look and they say kai who knows him look at how you put pressure on men of god people come for miracle service we have to be asking them where are you coming from so that you don't think that they organize things around. It's a shame. It's a shame. It says, he that has a son has life. Has life. Look at what Jesus did. An example of what we should become. Jesus, five loaves and two fish, he multiplied it. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Everywhere we go, we are doing bad or at least average. And yet we claim to have his spirit. There are people who even brag and say, I have the spirit of Jesus without measure. Where is it? Where, where did you keep the spirit of Jesus without measure? There is no sincerity in our pursuit of God. We tell a lot of lies. I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday. And I was telling them that the reason why many people do not grow is because we lie. I can fake it now. And say there's somebody here you have a stomach ache and somebody will arise and because i did not minister in truth my life will do you know that you can lie for a long time until it looks like the truth to you how many people don't pray they come on stage and run their mouth and speak nonsense i am a prayer warrior but there is a there is a touch of the throne that comes on every man of prayer 
it follows their teachings it's like a spirit it's like a finishing on your words if you are a man of the altar it truly that fire is not just the shouting there is a communication of life how many people claim they are prayer warriors and they stand and speak and while they are speaking you die spiritually until you start sleeping physically because there is no life that is coming the question God is asking you is why did you stop believing in me many of us did not start like this God is speaking to us many of us when we started we were spiritual we meant business with God eventually as we started getting some results in our lives we have thrown the Holy Spirit out now we are left with letters convincing ourselves that because we are reading scriptures it means we are growing spiritually do you not see the need in our world today there are people with HIV cancer there are people in need of the Zoe life that we claim to have we claim to have Zoe I am an ambassador of the kingdom then demonstrate it he said when I came to you I did not come in the excellency or the eloquence of speech because I know the danger that it can do to you. But when I came, I came in a demonstration. I came to prove to you. I came to bring the Jesus of your Bible to be made manifest here and now. Ah, this is the theme of my life. That everywhere I go, I become an expression of his reality. That no matter how you do not believe in God, when I show up, you can at least see something that convinces you of the reality of the christ right now demons sit in our congregations while we are gyrating and singing and worshiping they are joining us in the worship because there is absolutely nothing that can kick them out when we finish we say kai it was a wonderful service together let's share the grace and they join us and share the grace demons mock men of god all around and we give all kinds of explanations for it do you not see what is happening to the body of Christ? But the Holy Ghost revealed this to me. That in the seasons that are coming, personally, He's going to start leading men into strange encounters and tutorials. Where in a sleep, you will see a strange man come to you and begin to tell you, right, I want to teach you the mystery of spiritual power. And when you wake up in the morning, like, like Solomon, an intelligence you cannot account for, all of a sudden this is how this is how god trained me oh this is how god trained me i remember a time in my life when i was sleep in the night this happened for almost two months and at least one of god's generals will come to me in dreams explaining to me their perspectives i remember many of the people that have browsed and have taken from their lives i remember a man called peter tan the first time I would meet that man was in a vision. The first time I ever saw Apostle Paul, he was in a vision. I didn't even know he was the one. I just saw a man who was short and bald headed after speaking to me. Then I asked, who are you? And he didn't respond to me. He moved a while and then he turned and said, Paul. The first time I would see the picture on the internet, I said, this is the man I saw. Yet we know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. The name Koinonia was a revelation. It's not that I just sat down and said, Kai, what should we call it now? No, no. Right now, everything we do is sensual and carnal. The exact blueprint and the things that we are doing in this ministry were a revelation. A revelation by God. It was the spirit of God that revealed to me the secret of church growth. Now, I'm not saying I'm throwing away materials and all of that. It's good. I've, I've, I've taught us to build ourselves. But I'm saying, Koinonia, hear me. If we throw away the Holy Spirit, the spirit of God. Let me have somebody here. Just one person. Anybody. We're a visitor. We're a pastor. came all the way or oh, you served in Jigawa and you are here right now your face is new the Lord will use you greatly 
I know you came with a hunger from your heart. I will use you as an example and may that example be your experience. Huh? Hallelujah. Watch this. This is how God designed us to walk. Never separated from the Holy Spirit. If you are looking for women, look for it with him. If he approves it, then he's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are talking about ladies, let it be with his presence. If you are eating, let it be with him. See, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not a person you leave. And then when you come for koinonia, oh, sweet Holy Spirit, I, I love you. And, and all those things we say, I, I love you. You are my all in all. You are, you are this and that and, and all those kind of things that we bring. The Holy Spirit was sent literally, literally to continue the ministry of Jesus. If you want to know everything the Holy Spirit should do in your life, study Jesus in the Gospels. The Holy Spirit is all that and more. All that and more. There was a time I said, Holy Spirit, now you have to, what am I supposed to expect in your ministry? And he told me, he said, study Jesus. That's what he told me. Everything you ever see Jesus do to the disciples, expect the Holy Spirit to do to you, including revealing himself. There was a day he wanted to reveal himself and he said, who do men say I am? One day the Holy Ghost will ask you, who do men say I am? Say, yeah, you are the spirit of this. You are the... And then he says, who do you call me? And you say, I don't know you. And he says, now right, my name is the spirit of life. And to you that becomes a revelation. At once you begin to minister life because his words bring impartations. When was the last time you heard the voice of God? Not the one you are lying about. The real voice of God. When was the last time the presence of God came into your room in worship? Let me show you where we have thrown him away. When was the last time you locked yourself? When was the last time you even went for retreat? See, some of you are just remembering that there's a word called retreat. Because you've forgotten about it. You know advancement. You don't know retreat. Unfortunately in the kingdom, you must retreat to advance. That you shut everything and you began to worship until the temple, your temple now, not a building, is filled with his glory. And songs begin to come. Look at what musicians write. Nonsense. They, they write songs that don't bless anybody. They just come up with songs. The reason why we argue whether songs are scriptural or not is because most of them came from the belly of hungry people who are activating multiple streams of income. When was the last time you stood in his presence and you began to worship until your worship became a song and you touched a depth in the spirit that resonated in your spirit? When was the last time you went to minister, man of God, and you stood in that meeting and when you finished, people were shaking. They could not explain what happened. They knew that something heavenly, like the dew of the morning came upon them. They may not even remember what you thought, but they knew they carried the spirit. When was the last time, because of your teaching, someone just turned and said, Lord, I will seek you. And lock yourself three days. Do that today in our generation. And people say you are over spiritualizing things. So God is not like that. This guy came all the way from where? From, from Jigawa State. To come for a meeting. Because there is a hunger. It's not a conference. It's not a convention. But hunger brought him. Right? God must show us something in this generation. Otherwise, these games that we are playing will end up frustrating us. God must show us something. That's my cry as a man of God. I cry to God and I say, Lord, I don't want to do the ordinary. There is something you've got to show me. That's why I love my secret place. Those who are close to me know that my life is like a herbalist. My life is like a herbalist. You don't see me roaming around the street eating granite and moving. I say, ah, it's a joyful day. No, I'm on a pursuit. I'm on a serious pursuit. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face because my relevance is tied to his face. My relevance is tied to his glory. My ability 
to translate the realities in Christ. Let me tell you something. My, my goal, I've seen it in visions, but they have not happened. I saw one time in a vision. Let me share with you one vision that I had. One time, I, I say it jokingly, but truly, truly, I had a vision. And a ghastly motor accident happened. Ghastly motor accident. As it was happening, it's like I was caught up from somewhere. A physical location with my body. And all of a sudden, I appeared there. And it was just like a shadow like this. Just passed through those dead bodies. And including the car, there was a sound like the car. The way it hit, the impact, it came back as though nothing had happened. Ah, may God bring us to those days. May God bring us to those days. May God bring us to those days. A day when you speak to the earth to fight Boko Haram and let the military rest. You invoke the power of creation, the soul of the earth. And you find, is it not in your Bible where you see that many things happen to people? Flies came from everywhere to disturb the nation of Israel because God wanted his people to go. This bow and arrow we are using can only go so far. We are desperately in need of a spiritual generation. AK-47 can only do his best. But let me tell you, AK-47 is limited. Because Boko Haram and all the people, they know that it is now a spiritual affair. Traditional hunters in Meduguri have dared the military to leave them. Because they say they understand how to invoke the powers. You see that? The whole world is already crying for a supernatural dimension. That dimension is coming. Even if you are not interested, there are people who have pledged their lives to contend in the spirit. For you to do that, you must give up this mindset of trying to build a career in ministry. Because you have to be a fool to get to that kind of dimension. But how many people are that willing? Bless you. How many people are that willing? How many people are that willing? To see the power of God. Transformation and renewal is the key to making the realities in Christ to become a reality in your life right now. I made up my mind that everywhere I go to preach, I don't like people turning to me and saying, man of God, your message was powerful. Powerful in what? I want to see how much the gates of hell was shut down as a result of that. I want to see how revival stepped into a city as a result of my coming. Not just that a great man of God visited a place. That's not enough. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has this divine life. But the divine life is useless if we just leave it in Christ. It must be translated to find expression. The more of God's life and God's glory transports itself from the realm of the spirit to your present life, the more you are fulfilling what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness. And then you become, as I would say, the envoys of his presence, carriers of his glory, carriers of his power. Then you will see the eyes of the blind open. Then you will see the ears of the deaf unstopped. Hallelujah. While I was ministering over the weekend, there was a woman who, I don't know if they went to wash her ear or something, and then the ear was blocked during the workers' conference of CDC. And I called the woman out, and standing face to face, I said, I can either ruin this woman's life with lies, or give her something that is of the truth. One time, Benny Hinn was laying hands on people, and they were falling down, and Ora Roberts looked at him and said, Benny, don't just lay hands on them. He said, give them something. Oh, fine. Can you spare 10 minutes for us to watch the video right now? Media is ready with the video. Okay, media. Just, just play. Guys, maybe you can sit down and then after that, you come up. Let's, let's give the media 10 minutes to play the video. And um, it's a video of the supernatural. It's to spoil you and then I'll come up and, and, and wrap up. Very quickly.
in San Juan, Puerto Rico, where there's an amazing outpouring of the supernatural taking place. The Lord is touching so many lives in amazing ways, angelic visitation, uh, very unique signs and wonders, which we'll actually show you in a few moments. You'll be absolutely astounded at what the Lord is doing. But it's especially touching the younger generation on this island who are getting so fired up for God. There seems to be an acceleration of souls getting saved, healings, deliverances, miracles, all those good things with people deepening in their worship and, and loving the word of God. And so it's a, it's a true revival that is hitting people's hearts as these signs and wonders are being poured out. So we're at the House of uh, Restoration and Mercy with Pastor Dennis Roja, and uh, it's just awesome what is taking place. Pastor Dennis is one of the most humble people that I have ever met. He's so precious, has just a small uh, work and a very humble work. It reminds me of, of, of where Jesus loves to hang out and he is at this church doing great things. Um, Pastor Dennis uh, was uh, in, in, in 1977 uh, he had his first visitation of Jesus. It was an absolute encounter where he could touch Jesus, hear him talk, feel him. Jesus came to see him. He had a crown on his head with every stone of the 12 tribes of, of uh, Israel. And that's significant because we're going to show you the visitation of the stones that have come to Pastor Dennis in this last year um, that confirm that vision that he had back in 1977. When Pastor Dennis received that uh, first vision that he had, it was after he had been saved and delivered out of a lifestyle of homosexuality. He was a, a transvestite, cross-dresser, and the Lord saved him. And after that visionary encounter of Jesus Christ, Jesus touched him on the head, and all the demons completely came out of him. He became so fired up for God, a fiery believer, uh, has worked as an evangelist for a number of years and even in this uh, past few years has been pastoring. But there's been a phenomenal outbreak of signs and wonders, including oil being poured out, uh, gemstones appearing. In fact, he has received over 1,200 gemstones, um, all, already different colors. Some of them are diamonds, some rubies, emeralds. Uh, there's uh, silver uh, and, and, and gold dust that's fallen and all different colors of dust, diamond dust and emeralds and sapphires and, and onyx stone. In fact, I've got onyx, um, little pieces of onyx stone right now, right on my hands here uh, because uh, we just dunked them into this whole barrel of oil that the Lord uh, gave uh, to Pastor Dennis in, in, in his church. It kept pouring out, pouring out. They collected it in a big barrel of oil. And in it is filled with little onyx stones, uh, which is one of the stones of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he was telling us that as people take the oil out to take samples of it, and it has this incredible fragrance to it, that it just keeps filling up. So ho ho however much goes out comes back in. Uh, right now in the current church that he's in, that he has a Bible open on the podium and oil just fills the pages of the Bible. It's filling the pages of the Bible and uh, little gemstones, little rough cut diamonds are falling out of the Bible onto the podium. And then as he squeezes the Bible, the oil comes out, copious amounts of oil. This particular oil smells like myrrh. It's got the smell of myrrh on the inside of it and it comes pouring off the podium into a uh, collection vessel that he has and at the same time these kind of um, manifestations are happening in fact he's got oil being poured down the walls of his church off the beams onto the floor onto the seats and it's just non-stop continuous pouring out of oil at the same time these manifestations are taking place um, there's souls being saved, there's people being healed, intense worship and prayer, uh, deliverances, people are being set free. This is truly a move of God and that's how you can confirm if a sign is really from God. It'll cause people to worship the Lord more, to seek Him more. The signs of salvation and healing and deliverance and all the things that represent the kingdom of God should accompany the signs and wonders if they're truly signs and wonders from Jesus Christ. 
It must bring our focus back onto him that we'll get crazy in love with Jesus more and more and more. I tell you, I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing. When the oil started dripping soon after that, um, uh, Pastor Dennis came into his building one morning and all of a sudden the whole place was filled with gold dust that had fallen on the floor. And that's when he first noticed the prints. He was so excited. The Lord revealed to him that this was an angel that had visited. And the prints that were on the floor, the footprints, were actually the footprints of that angel. They're about 16 to 20 inches long, I believe. And um, then uh, he had to go away. The cleaning woman came in, cleaned up all the gold, vacuumed up the gold. And so when he came back, the prints were gone. He was so uh, concerned. But the Lord said, I'm going to visit you again. He visited again in that way, and on the carpet were the, the two footprints of the angel. Once again, this time, he cut out the carpet, cut out the footprints to keep them. And uh, we'll just show that to you on the screen. Um, and it's just covered in this, in this gold dust with diamond dust, silver, uh, emerald, ruby, sapphire, all these different colors. It's just absolutely brilliant. I know that the actual footage I don't think does it justice but when you're here you can actually feel the presence of the Lord all throughout this room and so it's really an amazing time uh, he was also at a, uh, a a prayer meeting with five men praying and they were uh, praying and as they prayed the Lord visited with an audible voice and with the audible voice the Lord said that he was going to give Pastor Dennis a gift that he had given to no Jew. And Pastor Dennis said, well, why are you giving it to me then? Because I'm a Gentile. And the Lord revealed to him that he was going to give him uh, a, a, a supernatural token of the 12 uh, tribes of Israel, the gemstones that represent the 12 tribes of Israel. And that he had an assignment for him to do in that way. And so then the gemstones... Uh, uh, came just dropped over the next month they start over one month from May the 1st of 2007 to May the 31st he had all 12 stones with the amber one being the last one when you see them in in, in, in person they're just brilliant and causes a worship an adoration in your heart an awe of the presence of the Lord when you see them absolutely outstanding 1200 gemstones over 1200 gemstones have fallen the 12 uh, special stones that were given to him uh, representing the 12 tribes of Israel that he is embracing in intercession before the Lord and the Lord has a special assignment for him in the reaching of Israel I believe and uh, many other signs and wonders such as the oil and the the Bible dripping the oil and the walls dripping the oil but all of it has released an acceleration of revival, an acceleration of souls, uh, and, and an acceleration of kingdom power. And this man, uh, Pastor Dennis, I believe was chosen because he is humble, because he is faithful, because he has integrity, because he is unselfish, and because he is wholly devoted to Jesus Christ. As you can imagine, he suffered a lot of persecution. People don't understand, they think he's of a cult or whatever, but I'll tell you, it's not a cult when people are getting saved and brought to the feet of Jesus and into his heart. It's not a cult when Jesus manifests his healing and deliverance power just like in the Bible. It's not a cult when the word of God is being exalted. It's not a cult when the name of Jesus is being so beautifully honored and where the fragrance of the nature and character of God is seen. It is the kingdom. Behold the kingdom of God, because it is at hand. Uh, Peter said, as he prophesied in Acts chapter 2, he said, in the last days, the Spirit of God would be poured out upon all flesh. And one of the things that would happen as a result of that outpouring is that there would be signs and wonders and harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Were you blessed? The goal is to... It's not just to get you so obsessed with signs and wonders. The goal is to show you that there are realities beyond your current realm. By the grace of God, one of these days, we'll just come and we'll dedicate about an hour and we'll watch a few videos of the revivals that have happened before now. It's important to connect with the moves of God and the things that he has done in time past. 
Hallelujah. It's very, very important. Because before he comes, brothers and sisters, I tell you, there will be a mighty church that will arise. All of these spiritual mysteries, tonight's message is just a spiritual awakening. It's to awake us from the slumber and to tell us there is more in God. That we no longer begin to just put our terms of work with God to money and marriage and power and mundane things. Thank God for these things. We just finished a financial series. But let me tell you the truth. God is looking for revivalists. God is looking for mighty men and women that he will do great business with. And I've made myself available. God knows with my entire life. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh. Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountain of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, spirit of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Sing, oh sing, oh sing, you are mighty on your own. Break forth the spirit of the deep and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your own. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Oh, sing, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, fountains of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Lord, this is a cry from a generation that is desperate to see your power and your glory. We are tired of church and religion. We want to see the kingdom come. We want to see his power revealed. The reality of the Zoe life, the divine life, the incorruptible seed of the word of God. We want to become epistles of power. Break forth, oh spirit of the deep, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh see, you ancient Zion's king, cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Say, you are mighty on your throne. 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 We refuse to reduce your power. Step up the standard, mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. You are 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 
ministry of the spirit that can change lives we will not deviate from the path of the apostles we will not deviate from the path of the prophets we will not deviate from the path of spiritual progress we will not deviate we refuse to bend we refuse to conform to the powerless dissertations of men you are mighty on your throne 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 say you are mighty on your throne
must walk conscious from today if you have received the son i want you to know that there is a life in you crying for expression there is a divine life that can heal the sick there is a divine life that can cast out devils there is a divine life that can change hopeless situations there is a divine life that can bring God to the sea stop preaching powerless sermons stop teaching just theology without grace stop exciting the people of God with no results in their lives your voice and pray one minute i am determined to be supernatural in every way in every way no the sons of god are not natural people they are supernatural in every way pray my hands are supernatural my words are supernatural lift your voice and pray My utterances are supernatural. They carry the life-giving power, the sway life. The power to heal, the power to alter the destinies of people, the power to transform their lives. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty in my life. 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 Say, You are mighty in my life. 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 